presentation. Thanks for everyone for being here. Uh, yes, uh, I'm the CEO of uh, General Sim Fuels. And yes, I'm going to talk about fossil fuels. But I'm going to convince you by the end of this presentation that we are a clean solution to fossil fuels. And General Sim Fuels is a company uh, determined to bring a green transformation to fossil fuels. And that's what we want to deliver today. And uh, when we talk about sustainability, it's just keep in mind, uh, because oil um, as fossil, uh, fossil fuels are uh, non-renewable um, uh, e e energy sources. Uh, we still think, think about the vast amount of fossil fuels that are in the world today. And what we're coming uh, with is a solution that will uh, uh, deliver those uh, energy uh, sources in an uh, environmentally friendly as well as an economically uh, viable way. And uh, that is general sea fuels. Let's just start by saying that, yes, I believe one percent in the Obama agenda. I believe in reduction of energy requirement. I also believe in alternative development. But it's an undeniable truth that oil will remain one of the big, actually the biggest source of energy in the world for many decades to come. That is an unescapable truth. Even uh, Walter there said that in his presentation early on. And basically today, the United States is bringing up to forty-five percent of. Uh, daily production from OPEC, Russia, and other countries. That creates geopolitical dependency. Uh, very much of price instability, like we saw last year, $150 per uh, barrel per, uh, dollar per oil per barrel. And just this week, it's going back to almost 70 again. There you go. And risk of supply disruption. Any time, you know, anything that can happens in the Middle East, today can create a disruption. Good news is that we have a huge vast resource in the backyard. North American oil shale and North American oil sands account for over 3 trillion barrels of oil underground in North America only. That is even a little more of a conventional proven oil in the, in the rest of the world. The question remains, how do you take that out safely, cheaply, and without uh, main, uh, uh, detriment to the environment? This is what oil shale looks like. And by the way, I just throw a sewer here for you to look at. So you really see what oil shell is. This is actually rock, and you can circulate this. Basically, that is hydrocarbon trapped in this stone. And this is what you see in the layers underground. So below the surface, what you see is this stone that is very uh, um, porous, uh, trapped, sorry, with a hydro, uh, hydrocarbon trapped in the stone. That is where the energy comes from. Today, current technologies uh, for oil shale and oil sand are very expensive, capital intensive. They require, um, in fact, uh, uh, very detrimental to the environment. And the energy balance, uh, input of energy required to take energy out of the ground is not very uh, uh, profitable or not very uh, economical. Uh, and finally, the products that come out of the ground are actually um, dirty products, sludgy, if you will. So they require uh, specialized in, 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 in intensive refining to actually take it to the market. And that adds to the cost of it. And that's why you, you hear, um, you know, tar sand being at 60 or $70 per ton uh, cost uh, structure. So the resource is there, but how you, how you use it effectively. That's what we come in. General Sea Fuels has a breakthrough in situ gasification technology. And what we do basically, we'll have minimal, minimal environmental impact. <laughs> Impressive returns on energy invested. What we produce from, from our process is going to be a, a upgraded pro product that will be used in any refinery in the United States or the world. And uh, we will produce at very competitive prices. Let me tell you one thing. If you see that the market is really green there, and this is what we really believe in, what we start basically by selecting a piece of uh, land, patch of land, uh, let's say Wyoming, Colorado, uh, Wyoming, uh, Rock Springs, Wyoming, Green River or a PN's uh, uh, base in Colorado, or uh, you know, any, any area in Utah where these vast uh, uh, resources exist. And below ground, what you see is actually a stratification, as you saw in that picture before. So you see the oil uh, trapped in layers. And if you think about this, two million years ago, this was uh, uh, you know, some dinosaur walking around or, or, or some organic matter. And what you see over time is trapped. Now, if you think about this, this is closer to the surface. When you look very much down below, uh, 10,000 feet on the ground, more or less, you find coal, which is really, really thick. And this is, the, by pressure, the thickest material you can find. This is less 
uh, thing than, than coal. And if you think about the evolution, this is basically coal or oil four or five billion years down the road. So this is immature uh, hydrocarbon. But it's still there, it exists there nevertheless. So we identify the, the resource and then we drill the hole. Or drill, right? So we drill a hole which is big enough to then have a, a piping mechanism that we put down to just where the overburden starts. The overburden meaning the, the, the soil that uh, you, you step on that is inert. So right where the resource starts, we stop the casing, and what you find here is an empty shaft. Okay, so it's a naked rock. To that naked rock, we then inject superheated gas. These are combustion gases co coming from a um, uh, heat exchange system that we designed. And that, uh, th those superheated gases are going to be circulated very slowly, very slowly. It's a gentle sweep. What, what kind of gases? Combustion gases. Basically, you, you burn Natural gas. You burn air, you take the oxygen out of the air, and what you pump in there is nitrogen and CO2, primarily, which is combustion gases from a heater, uh, uh, from a heater system. And the, the oxygen is very much controlled so anything that you, 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 you push in there is below 1% oxygen to maintain a reduced chemistry, chemistry environment on the ground. So what you have here is a non-burning thermal energy field that starts glowing, glowing, and it, it immediately starts percolating into the shale and, and out, outward from the source of the heat. As that radiant heat starts expanding, and in mind, that's above 1,000 degree Fahrenheit at all times, what happens is that the carriage trapped in that stone starts breaking, cracking, specifically, it's a petrochemical term. And as it cracks, it breaks down molecularly to a smaller molecule, which eventually uh, vaporizes. And when it gasifies, it looks for the path of least resistance. It's almost like you know, it, it finds its way out the best it can. And which one is the path of least resistance? Source of the heat. So all those gases are then taken into the, the, the effluent pipe. So absolutely no emission here. Why do we think this is going to work so, so well? Well, because we are recovering toward this, the same uh, source of the heat, which happens to be the area of greater permeability. So there's really no escaping of those uh, hydrocarbons anywhere else but the source of the heat that we are actually applying. And those gases are then taken into a condenser, which we've also defined as a three-stage three condenser system which pull out the air, uh, the, 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 the gas in, in mind. This has uh, the, the combination of the combustion gases we're injecting plus all the gas effluent that comes from the